Hello and welcome to Expats Everywhere. Thank you for joining us. If you could, tell us your name, where you're from, and a little of your background. Um, my name's Steve, uh, Steve Wood, and I'm from South Africa. And uh, my background is in the environmental sciences um, and forestry. And um, uh, I worked in the industries for a number of years, and only just recently moved over to education in 2009. Okay, great. And what countries have you worked in? Uh, South Korea was my first uh, posting, and I've taught in South Africa as well um, thereafter, and now I've been in Saudi Arabia currently. Okay, awesome. And what was it like working in South Korea? Uh, fantastic. It was an excellent experience. Yeah, I've always, I've always wanted to go to Japan, and it was the closest uh, I got. Um, well, I actually did get to Japan, but um, in terms of experiences, um, it's pretty much spot on, yeah. Fantastic. And what city did you work in in Korea? I worked in a small city. Um, some call it a, a large village, but it uh, goes by the name of Jongyo uh, City. And it's um, approximately halfway between Jeonju, the capital of the Jeollanam province, and Gwangju um, to the south. Okay, great. Uh, do you know what kinds of jobs are available there? Well, the ESL jobs. Um, primarily ESL and there uh, are other jobs in, um, for English speaking uh, people, but mainly ESL. Okay. And what did a typical day look like for you? A uh, typical day was um, head off to school uh, by 8 a.m. Okay. and uh, teach until um, at very sometimes 4.30, 6 o'clock, uh, 6 p.m. Um, and that was pretty much a typical day, yeah. Were you in a school or an academy? A school. Um, government school. Well, it wasn't a government, it was a private school. Um, and so it was a little bit different. It was a vocational private school. And uh, so it was slightly different to a normal government. Okay. Did you know anyone else that was in a different job outside of ESL? Um, yeah, I knew a couple of people. Um, well, Okay, university positions, but that's also ESL related. But and then those that were in English, you know, uh, university positions, so it was as professors of English first language. Okay. But um, and then there were those. Um, I knew someone who was an editor um, for a magazine. Um, someone who was doing freelance work, also editing. Editing um, in English, I, I see. In English, yeah, for for companies, yeah. Okay. Um, so as an ESL teacher, how much can you expect to earn in, in Korea? In Korea, um, it's going to be $2 and one, and uh, that's what I was earning. And um, then you get extra income for doing you know, your extra lessons at school, um, so all legal. Mm. Um, and so you can boost your income to about $2.5 million uh, a month. Okay, and could you tell us about how much that is in dollars or South, South African Rand? Um, dollars, it's about um, two, two, 2.2, um, 2,200. Okay, yeah. all right, great. And do you think that this is enough money and what kind of lifestyle can you can you live? Oh yeah, I think it's, uh, it's enough. Um, it's, it's good money. Um, I, I have a mortgage to pay it out and I said to meet that requirement and have extra money to save and travel and um, so yeah I think it was especially for someone coming out of uh, just coming out of school and um, and and working I think it's a it's a pretty good income okay great um, and what type of lifestyle can someone live can they be eating out a lot and, and going out with friends or is it more uh, you know staying at home well you know you can you can go um, full out and you can eat out Every night, if you want, um, if you provide, you find some place cheap. I mean, here you can get meals for five thousand, seven thousand, one, and that's pretty cheap. Um, but yeah, um, if you're going to save, you need to eat at home. Yeah. Okay, and, and not party too much. <laughs> right. And how much of your monthly salary can you save? Um, I think uh, if you're thrifty, about three quarters of it, okay. um, or half of it, I'd say. But, yeah. Okay. How much money do you need to start up when you first move to Korea? How much do you need like, to give yourself as a cushion? Mm. 
you really don't need, need, uh, need much because Korea is one of those countries that you're not expected to pay anything for. Your flight is paid up front. Your, mm. um, your agent doesn't require any money, no, no put down. Um, so um, for startup, all you need is something to carry you through your first month. So roughly, I took $500, that was enough. Yeah. Okay, wow, that's great. Um, so tell us, what's the weather like and what, what should someone pack to move to South Korea? Well, in Korea, they pride themselves with the, the four seasons, so, and uh, four very definite seasons. So um, if you're going in the, in, uh, in the winter, then uh, it's pretty much sort of Canadian kind of cold, and so you need to have good, good outdoor gear, mm. gloves, you know, uh, thermals, etc. Um, summer, very hot, humid, uh, t-shirt, uh, shirt, uh, yeah, it's... Okay, so pack for all four seasons. All four seasons. All right, great. Uh, what are some things that you can't find in South Korea that you would recommend someone should bring, that expats should bring or pack? Yeah, the, what, I, what I missed was uh, linen. Uh, you can't get linen. So that's, that's the one I would say bring along. But uh, again, you don't know what you're getting, whether you're getting a single double bed or something. So I'd say bring both. <laughs> okay, great. And uh, how can you cope without these things? What did you do if, if you didn't bring it? Well, you should have to buy um, one of the... They, they have very thin quilts mm -hmm. that they put over their bed. So you can get away just using the quilt. Okay. Mm -hmm. An important question that a lot of people ask is how safe is it in, in this or that country? So how safe is it in Korea? Did you feel safe personally? Korea is extremely safe. Yeah, um, I felt uh, very safe. Not, there wasn't a moment I felt unsafe. Um, yeah, so that's it's safe. Yep. Okay. People are honest. Yeah. Great. And uh, how did you meet people there? Um, with a bit of difficulty. Really? <laughs> um, I was basically uh, quite rural. So um, in the whole town, there were only about eight teachers. Um, and if we didn't make a point of meeting up, we had a, a teacher's club. And we met at a restaurant on Friday nights. And if I didn't go to that, I, I could literally go for months without seeing a foreigner. Wow. Okay. Um, so uh, I would also travel into um, Seoul uh, once a month just to get that expat factor. factor yeah. Right. How far of a journey was that from where you were? It was about two and a quarter hours on the KTX. So, okay. um, What's the KTX? Uh, that's the uh, rapid rail system. Oh, uh, cool. So which gets up to about 300 kilometers an hour, so it's, it's pretty fast. Great. And uh, what can you do for fun there? Um, Korea outdoors is amazing, um, especially when I compare it to where I'm now, it's in uh, Saudi Arabia. Uh, Korea, uh, look back with nostalgia, it's mm. um, uh, an amazing place for cycling, for um, you know, sort of hiking. Um, the hiking trail networks are amazing. They have outdoor clubs. You can join the uh, expats uh, clubs. They do outings all the time, weekends, um, and there's plenty to do. Yeah. Okay. Do you feel that that Korea in general is a good travel hub? Yeah, it is. It is particularly for if you as a travel hub for Asia, it is. But um, certainly not for you, for other parts of the world. But um, for for Asia, it's fantastic. Even to get to Australasia, it, was, uh, it gave me that opportunity to be able to travel to Australasia during my sun break, um, which I probably would, wouldn't have done otherwise. Okay. And lastly, can you tell us uh, what are some pros and cons of living in South Korea? Um, the pros is definitely the, the cultural experience, mm. a unique, fantastic cultural experience. Um, and... Um, the food is also um, part of again part of culture, but it's um, uh, I grew to to really like the food. Uh, at first, it's um, it takes a while to get used to. Uh, I'm not used to um, fiery food, and um, they like their um, what is it again? They they like um, kimchi and burning stuff. <laughs> okay. And what about the cons? Uh, the cons are um, language is is um, con trying to understand if you can get to, you know uh, 
not find your way around, that's relatively easy, but um, the language barrier in terms of asking direction, uh, the standard of English is fairly low in Korea generally. Okay. Um, and not many people, well, especially being in a rural area, but in the large urban areas like Seoul, Busan, and so on, yeah, um, I think it's fine, you can get around. Um, but reading labels, reading uh, food labels, especially, um, so they don't have a wide variety of Western style food. So to know what you're going to be eating would be great, you know. Yeah. All right. Listen, Steve, we really appreciate you joining us today and giving us information on Korea and the village that you were in. Thank you. My pleasure.